Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Ravel Aero B High Research Rocket, model kit number H 1814. It's a 140th scale kit at a skill level 1, although that might be a little conservative. I believe it's more for the intermediate builder. And it's no longer in production, but it's. Um, originally was released in 1958 in the International Geophysical Year and it was reissued in 1996 but they're still available on online auction sites and sometimes in garage sales so they're actually still easy to get although the original kits are pretty pricey now back in 1957 the actual rocket um, set an altitude record of 180 miles but it was mostly known for testing equipment that helped pave the way for America's manned uh, space program. Now, this mold does show a few signs of age in some areas, and but it contains uh, 35 pieces molded in gray and white plastic with three crew members. It has water slide decals and uh, English instructions, of course. And it, when you're done with it, uh, the length is about 12 and a half, uh, while the fins and uh, launch platform are three and a quarter by two and a quarter. Here are the contents of this kit, uh, and please note that we'll be using uh, liquid cement and sometimes uh, slow setting tube glue, you know, if we need to uh, be careful with alignment. Occasionally, fragile pieces need some super glue, though. And, um, Notice the uh, the decals here are, are pretty good. Uh, they've probably been revised since the original uh, release. Uh, but I strongly suggest you use some decal setting solution to make sure they conform to contours and stick well to the body of the model. So construction will start with the rocket itself. And these are the uh, pieces that uh, uh, belong to the rocket. And after cleaning those up, um, you may want to uh, scrub those in some mild uh, soap and water uh, just to make sure there are no release oils left on them. And then we'll be um, cleaning the uh, or cutting the parts off uh, from the tree for the uh, uh, parts 1R and 2L here in preparation for assembly. And we use a sprue cutter to make sure we don't damage any of the pieces. Uh, you will find that test fitting uh, is important, especially with older models, um, because um, there may have been warpage over the years just sitting in the box but um, now we can uh, put the two halves of these two pieces together 1R and 2L and then now uh, once you've gotten some liquid cement applied there with uh, with a paintbrush you can go ahead and uh, snap a rubber band on there uh, so that it dries in place. Now I'll go ahead and get out the larger pieces of the rocket's body and again we're going to um, hold those together with rubber band and then uh, allow some liquid cement uh, capillary action to uh, run down the seams and glue those two pieces together. Once that's done, uh, follow it up with uh, a rubber band to, uh, with, to make sure that it stays in place and together. Now it's time to you know grab all the parts that uh, make up the rocket assembly here to um, do some test fitting uh, just to make sure that everything fits together properly um, and then uh, you can stage those for uh, future assembly here. Get the nose cone and uh, make sure that that is seated fully and use some liquid cement to join the uh, part to the missile's body. Next you can attach the uh, front section of the missile with the nose cone in place to the main body of the missile and uh, glue that uh, section together with some liquid cement. Next we can dry fit the, uh, the tail assembly there and the booster connector to the uh, missile body proper uh, just to make sure that it's going to be a good snug fit. Now here's a, a close-up of a small piece but um, you can uh, see here that we're going to assemble part number 8 the booster tail cap and the booster exhaust cap uh, part number 10 together you can glue those into place. Next we can glue the, um, the booster tail assembly and uh, to the booster there part number 9. We'll get that um, 
the booster tail assembly and we're going to add that to the missile proper. Now work slow, make sure that uh, you've got good rotation and alignment of fins and that the parts uh, fit together uh, straight so that the rocket doesn't have any uh, kinks to it um, along the way so it fits on the launch vehicle. Now that the rocket is assembled um, we're going to get that ready for paint. So after they've all been uh, dried um, you clean up the seams, take a look at any of the seams there, make sure that uh, you know those are sanded uh, properly with either sticks or uh, sandpaper at the seams and then uh, it was ready for painting after that so I painted mine with some gray primer and then um, several coats of uh, flat white and I followed that up with some uh, of the uh, clear coat to give it a good decaling surface. With the rocket basically finished, I uh, took the three figures and cut them away from the sprue. Uh, and then uh, the two of those uh, have, they're in fueling suits, and then one is in just uh, regular mechanics uh, work clothes. Uh, but um, get those ready by cleaning up any of the uh, edges or uh, mold lines. And they come with separate bases, part 41, uh, to allow a variety of positions around the missile area glue the characters to their bases and then I just use some tape to stick the figures to a piece of scrap wood and uh, I used my brush uh, airbrush to prime the figures with some gray and when that was dry some I used uh, some aluminum metalizer uh, for the fueling suits and then the olive drab for the regular uh, work clothes employee there uh, and here's a process of that so you can uh, set those aside to dry for later detailing Next we can start working on the launch transport. Um, I left the wheels in the front bogey off to minimize braking and facilitate painting. Uh, so then I took part uh, 12 here of the frame and uh, 11 which is the hydraulic lines and then I glued those into place uh, prior to paint. Following that um, I added the trailer frames uh, back in the bracket there on the base uh, to the back end into place and you can glue those with uh, some uh, some of the liquid cement for a good strong bond. The uh, trailer jacks will uh, be glued into place at the back end here with this uh, large platform bracket. Uh, the one on the left is in place and the one on the uh, right there is waiting to go in and uh, as you can see uh, the other photo here the red arrows indicate where the, the jacks are put into place at the back end. Now the wheels here, parts 15 and 16, are two-piece units. So we're going to glue the rear wheels together and that's going to leave uh, quite a seam. So clean that up with uh, 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 probably a hobby blade and some uh, sandpaper, maybe sanding sticks, and get those uh, cleaned up for paint. We'll grab these parts out of the kit, uh, and the finished rear wheels and the rear axle, uh, that's part 17, uh, along uh, the trailer assembly. and then. Uh, we're going to put the rear axle into place, uh, but the rear wheels will remain off uh, for painting later on. So now we can uh, get the um, transport bogey uh, frame there, which is part number 19. And then uh, we're going to put that into place uh, on the trailer frame. Locate the um, wheels uh, assemblies that we did earlier, along with um, part number 21, that's the trailer tongue. And then uh, we'll leave those out until after we paint. Next, grab the oil cooler. Uh, that's part number 30. And then it's installed uh, next onto the trailer there in the center in that cross frame. We can flip the trailer over now and install the launch arm support. That's part number 29 into place. It goes right there uh, uh, at the uh, one end of the frame. So get the cradles out from the kit, um, parts 26 and 7, and we're going to assemble those to the launch arm, um, and part 23 is the launch rail, and uh, 22 is the launch arm bearing, so go ahead and assemble all those together. Next we get to one of the trickier parts of construction. Uh, this bearing is held to the trailer by uh, gluing the trailer's top a frame top to the trailer and then trapping the pins on the launching arm bearing to hold it into place on the trailer while allowing it still to pivot. So the piston clevis part number 24 is glued to the launch arm uh, 
and the valve control which is part number 31 is glued to the frame top. The trailer is finished by snapping the hydraulic cylinder into place later and adding the handrails part 37 to the walkways. Get out the pieces for the hydraulic ram and the two parts on the right here are the cylinder parts 32 and 33. Glue those halves together and then the piston part 34 is on the left. The piston slides into the cylinder there and you'll find you'll, you'll probably need to do a little trimming on the uh, edges to make sure that it uh, moves just enough to slide in and out and stay positioned where you place it. With the transporter mostly um, assembled I, I painted it uh, with some a gray primer and then coated the transport with olive drab. Then the tires, the oil cooler and the hydraulic lines were painted with some flat black and the hydraulic ram uh, to lift the transport arm and the rocket were painted steel color. So carefully uh, snap the wheels into place on the axle spindles there and add the rails and then go ahead and uh, put the pistons into place on the launch rail add the um, uh, missile to the launch rail and uh, this model is complete. Decals and uh, some of the paint touches here were uh, garnered from online uh, sources, uh, photos of the rocket and the box art. As you can see, uh, you know, the soldiers were painted with basically some flesh tone faces and hands and then uh, some hair on the, on the actual uh, mechanic there. Um, the model itself has a couple of uh, gloss black adjacent fins and then uh, the decals are simply applied uh, as they are seen in position onto the model and from resources that you find on the internet. Well there you have it. This model uh, is not too difficult to put together. You just need to pay a little bit of attention to seams and use some online resources for uh, colors etc. But it's a, almost a ready-made diorama uh, with the two the three crew members there getting it prepped for launch. So if I were you I'd go out find one and put it on my shelf. We hope you like the step-by-step -step premium model kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and our website right on replicas.com. Thanks!